Let's go. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. I'm your host, David Horsager. Join me as I sit down with influential leaders from around the world to discuss why leaders and organizations fail, top tactics for high performance, and how you can become an even more trusted leader. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. It's David Horsager. We have a special guest today. He is the best-selling author of a few books. His newest book, Do It Marketing. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And we sit together on Million Dollar Speakers Group and some other uh, groups uh, and association groups that I'm I'm thrilled to be a part of. But brilliant marketer and how that ties to credibility and trust. We're going to talk about it. Before we do, welcome, Mr. David Newman. Thank you, David. Great to be here. And I love the furniture you have in here. Uh, well, thank you. There we go. <laughs> let's uh, let's start with this, though. Let's go back to the entrepreneurial journey. Tell us a couple things we don't know about David Newman. Where did you start? How did you get going? Sure. Well, I actually started a college pre-med. I failed out of pre-med because I couldn't pass chemistry, physics, and calculus. Failed all those in the same semester. Decided to switch to drama, and you can imagine the conversation there with my parents. Hey, I'm not going to be a doctor, but I'm going to go into the theater. And so I did that. I actually have an MFA. I have a graduate degree in theater. Did theater for four years in New York City. Tough to make money at that. And I started adjunct uh, teaching at my uh, college, at my graduate school. And a friend of mine says, hey, David, you're seeming pretty good at this teaching thing. You can do that for companies, and that's called corporate training. And maybe you can make a living doing that. So that started my 10-year corporate training and consulting career. That was 1992 to 2002. 2002, I went out on my own. I said, well, how hard can this be? I know how to train. I know how to coach. I know how to consult. And as I quickly found out, and I know that, David, you found out the same way, it's not about doing the work. It's about getting the work. And I struggled for years. I mean, I made every mistake in the book. I made the good ones twice. And I finally figured out some things. And then my, my corporate training, speaking, consulting took off. And that was about the first four or five years of my business. And then friends of mine started coming to me and saying, hey, David, can I take you to breakfast? Can we have coffee? Can we have lunch? Can I just pick your brain? And I never thought that that was anything more than just being a nice person and helping others because they were good people. They had good questions. I had fun answering the questions. A career consultant friend of mine, who's still a friend to this day, we're having one of these breakfast meetings where he's asking me all these great questions and I'm riffing and ranting. He says, you know, you should do this for a living. And I said, do what? Eat bacon and eggs? He says, no, no, you should help consultants and trainers and speakers and you know executives go out and build their brand and build a business and blah, 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 blah. And David, I laughed at him. I was like, yeah, no, no way. I'm going back to Bank of America and Wells Fargo and PNC Bank and QVC and Microsoft and IBM. And these are my clients back in the 1990s. Um, I am not going to go into the entrepreneurial coaching and consulting world. He said, no, no, listen, you are really gifted at this. What if I put a small group together and we just meet in your living room? I said, listen, I'll do it just to help you and just for a little bit of fun. But I said, I'm going to have to charge you money. And I charged them coffee and bagel money. And so we met for four weeks in my living room. I charged them like 50 bucks for all four weeks. Um, that's coffee and bagel money. And we had some juice also. And I was having more fun and I was having more satisfaction and fulfillment and enjoyment in my living room with these four consultants than I was having with my big corporate training and consulting clients. This is around 2008. 2008, I said, wait a minute. There's like a little positive tap from the universe here. This is not an accident. I need to pay attention to this. And that was literally the day, the fourth, the fourth session, that fourth Tuesday morning, when I knew I would miss these folks more than I had missed any of my corporate clients. Sorry, corporate clients. And I started to turn down that corporate side of my business. I started to turn up uh, eventually the business that we have today, which is exactly helping consultants and trainers and coaches and executives build their own personal brand, start a business, grow a business, get more clients, have more fun. Uh, but it was, it was a total accident and it was a total random left turn back in 2008. 
And you, you know, we talked about something. This is fun because you know, you know, I started in the basement with black mold, no windows, bathroom or kitchen of Clara Miller's, and we got to use hers thankfully, and that's how Lisa and I uh, started. Uh, for for two years we lived there, and uh, thankfully things have changed. But um, and there was a lot of shifts and turns along the way. Uh, but you know, you said something about what marketing is to some people, and then you talked about that, and it, I think it fits really well with what we do out of the institute. Tell us about defining marketing in certain ways. Well, I think marketing really comes down to building a level of personal credibility. That A, do you know what you're talking about? B, do you do what you say and say what you do? And again, trust, we're talking to the king of trust here, so it's very congruent with what you're teaching and what you're you're helping your teams and companies with. But I really think that comes down to a personal level. When people talk about building a personal brand, that phrase, by the way, makes me crazy because it's got a million different definitions and no one really knows what that is. I think building a personal brand comes down to one thing and one thing only, which is building your personal credibility. Building your credibility is pretty much equal to trust. When we said it earlier uh, before the show, you said, hey, the way most people need to think about marketing is building trust. The way they might think about it in companies is credibility. So this is what we're doing. And and, you know, this took me a little while because I was kind of like, doesn't everybody just want this trust? I actually have to share it. We actually have to market it. We have to, people don't even get it unless they've seen it several times. Funny thing about the book, my new book that came out, Trusted Leader, came out just a a few weeks ago. And this, uh, I think a mutual friend of yours actually uh, saw it. I didn't know him yet, but he's in our circle a little bit. And he saw a lot of my friends share it. And he said, boy, this guy has a lot of friends sharing this book. And finally, he texted me, wanted to be you know, Facebook friends, and said, I I said, how many times seeing it did it actually take to buy it? And he said, five. And you and I have both heard you have to see something six to eight times or whatever before you buy it or connect with it or whatever. Well, if we want to change the world, if we really believe in our message, people actually do have to see it. They have to hear about it if they're even going to know about it to trust it, right? So yeah. so I'm a CEO, let's say, uh, and and I need to gain more credibility. I need to gain more trust. It might take some visibility. How, how might I do that from your thinking around do it marketing? Sure. Well, you know, one of the things that we we teach is a personal branding strategy, which is really a credibility strategy that we call 3PR. 3PR is an acronym for professional personalized public relations. So 3Ps, 1R, personalized professional public relations. This has nothing to do with a public relations agency. It has nothing to do with your corporate communications group. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's a three-legged stool. Leg number one is speaking. It's a speaking strategy. So you're the CEO. How often are you on stage, on camera, on Zoom, in front of the people that you want to build credibility with? Because we can no longer hide behind email. We can no longer hide behind closed-door meetings. We can no longer hide behind memos. We can no longer hide behind corporate doublespeak. Uh, Corporate leadership is personal leadership. And personal leadership is personal credibility. And you need to display that on a regular basis in front of the troops, in front of internal audiences, in front of external audiences, in front of customers, partners, vendors, uh, franchisees, whatever it is in your world. How much are you leveraging a speaking strategy, which means on video, on webinars, on uh, video clips in the media, all of these different things, again, internal, external, public and private. So that's like number one. So let's, is- let's just touch on something interesting here. What we found from the research is actually something interesting that did happen. There's positives, many negatives in the pandemic. People want to point out, and that's true. But one of the positives in the pandemic is suddenly you saw... CEOs uh, get out of the ivory tower and be talking on Zoom, and the cat jumped on the you know on the on the keyboard, and the 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 the, the four year old ran in their undies behind them, and all of a sudden we humanized the ivory tower, and actually a whole lot of good came out of that. So uh, number one is speaking to your troops. It could be right through Zoom. Tell us how you how, how do you do that authentically? Give us an example of something I can do tomorrow morning as a CEO well, uh, sure. to, to my troops. You know. I think the the video thought of the day, 
the video thought of the day, and it can be anything. You can literally, what I tell my executives to do is grab a post-it note, jot down three quick ideas that you can spend 30 to 45 seconds each with a motivational message, a leadership message, an update, a new product, a new program, a new customer success story, something that you're proud of, something that you're excited about, something that the entire company can really start to rally behind. Flip on the camera, look at your post-it note. Sometimes we even put the post-it note right next to the webcam so you don't need to look around or look down at your notes or look awkward. And then just spontaneously riff on those three pieces of great news or exciting updates or future possibilities, where the company's going, um, uh, you know, something new, something exciting, a customer success story, any of those kinds of things. Two or three things. Video is going to be one or two minutes long. You are not going to like it. You're not going to like it at all. Oh, my lighting wasn't right. Oh, the camera wasn't quite perfect. You're going to want to send this to corporate communications. Hey, could you guys and gals clean this up? Could you put in some bumpers? Could you put in some music? Could you put the corporate logo up in the corner? I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to beg you, don't do that. Don't do that. Humanize. I love what, David, you just said. You have a human moment in front of the camera. And then you start to have multiple regular, consistent human moments in front of the camera, and you will transform into the trusted leader that you've always wanted to be. Hey, it's Anne with the Trust Edge team here. As you know, we are passionate about helping you and your team perform at your best. And that's why David wrote his new book, Trusted Leader. This true to life parable follows the story of a CEO who uncovers the root issue threatening his organization's success. And in the back half of the book, David provides a roadmap for even how to solve those road issues. Get Trusted Leader for your team, your organization, or even just for yourself at trustedleaderbook.com. So number one is speaking. And by the way, to back this up from the newest research, our Trust Outlook Research Global Study, 92% of people would trust their senior leaders more if they are more transparent about their mistakes. Not just transparent, but transparent about their mistakes. Share your mistakes and where you're headed. It might help humanize it and people trust you more. I love the idea also of just get on there. Don't worry about it so much. Share constant. Where are you going? What's what's a highlight? What's a positive? Uh, fantastic. I think uh, T-Mobile does this well, right? The CEO from T-Mobile. There's some people that are actually doing this well on a big scale and people are seeing, oh, this is this is a human doing this. Number one on the stool was speaking authentically. Yes. Number two. Yeah. Number two is publishing. And when I say publishing, people always get freaked out like, oh my gosh, do I have to write a 200 page business book like David Horsager? It's like, no, we're not talking about publishing a book. Although eventually you may want to go there, but that's a whole separate conversation. We're talking about publish your writing. Publ it could be a short blog. It could be a daily update. It could be uh, a post that goes on your intranet. But again, don't get the corporate speech writer to write it. Don't get your corporate communications folks involved. Authentic writing from the heart, right? It's like writing a personal letter. If the president of the United States can grab some stationery, grab a, a fountain pen and jot down four or five sentences and write a personal note to someone who's important to them, trust me, you can write something that's important to people who are important to you. So the whole concept of it's again, it's a communication strategy and it's a transparency strategy. We want to hear from our leaders. We want to hear from our leaders on video. We want to hear from our leaders in the media. We want to hear from our leaders internally and externally. When you write, you boost your expertise. When you write, you boost your transparency. And when you write, you are the best face and voice of your company that there is. Now, a lot of CEOs, especially the ones that might be more introverted, they go, oh, this is not about me. I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to hog the spotlight. We have a lot of smart people who work here. We have a research department, a sales department, a marketing department, a production department, an engineering department. They should do the writing. Let me shine the spotlight on them. Well, you know what? I would agree with you. So let's shine the spotlight on them, but that still does not let you off the hook. You as the president, you as the CEO, you as the founder, you as the chairman, you need to have a face and a voice and a pen. And the pen is mightier than the sword. And the more that you write, the more that you communicate, the more people will start to like you and trust you. 
I like this. So one, one comment that comes to mind here is one of the great books I read actually in college was the book Right to Learn. And the argument is, when basically, when you write, you learn. You, you solidify, you clarify, you, you become more expert. When, and I can tell you, every book I've written, every time I've published an article, I get clearer when I write it down. It gets more, uh, I, I, I start to see even gaps, gaps in a, in a research argument. When I'm writing, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. What's really, you know, really here? So write to learn. So number one is speaking. This is for gaining credibility as a and anybody, but let's take a senior leader uh, to be more the, the three PR professional, personalized, personalized. That's yeah. authentic and uh, public relations. Professional, personalized, public relations. Three legged stool. Number one is speaking. Number two is publishing. Number three is number three is social media. And as soon as I say, oh, CEOs should be involved in social media, I know heads are exploding around the world. Heads are exploding around the country. I don't have time. It's nonsense. Our prospects aren't there. We have an entire team dedicated to this. Why in the world should I waste my time? Just like authenticity and transparency and credibility are built via speaking and they're built via writing, when you say, you know, this is a message from the CEO, right? This is on your personal LinkedIn profile. It's not the company page. It's not a press release. It's not in the annual report. This is what does Suzanne think right now, today, this morning, I wanted to write to you about an important development in our industry. I wanted to write to you about an important development at our company. I want to write to you about something that is super exciting that's in the future of our entire industry. And here's what our company is doing to take part in that and even to lead the conversation in that. Because the social media component, that builds your spreadability. Right. So we've talked about authenticity. We've talked about credibility. Now we need to amplify and magnify that with your social media channels. And again, not the company's channels, the CEO's personal profile, the CEO's Facebook page, the CEO's LinkedIn profile. Um, I even hesitate to say this because of all the social media backlash. But yes, the CEO's Instagram and Twitter accounts. Um, so put good energy, could put put good personal energy into social media, and it will be an amplifier and a magnifier of your leadership. Is it best? I mean, I talked to, I interviewed someone yesterday, and they said, "I just the only place I am is LinkedIn, and he just does LinkedIn." Our biggest, uh, you know, where I am predominantly for uh, our work is LinkedIn. Although personally, I have a you know, Facebook is is easy. But do you have to do, I feel like, do you have to do all of these? Is it too much to, to split and be all over the place and, you know, have to manage all this stuff? Some people are like, you know, man, we don't want people to waste all this time just putting stuff out. What, what do totally, you think about Totally, totally, totally. So I think as far as the main mothership for most B2B companies and most B2B CEOs, it is totally going to be LinkedIn. But then where do you amplify and magnify and share that LinkedIn content? And this, this doesn't even have to be the CEO in phase two. Phase two is take that original LinkedIn content and do a series of tweets, do a series of Instagram posts, make a series of images or memes that drive people back to that original LinkedIn content. So you've got the beacon and then you've got the outposts. The beacon, I totally agree with you, David, the beacon needs to be living on LinkedIn but the outposts, right, all of the kind of ecosystem around the company's social media or even other executives, you know, your whole C-suite social media, they should be mentioning and referring and pointing back to that piece of CEO content that lives originally on LinkedIn. So this is great. 3PR, and if I'm going to gain credibility with my team, I've got to be speaking to them. I've got to be publishing, giving them authentic uh you know, content or authentic thoughts. And I've got to deal with social media, whether I like it or not. What's changed in the pandemic around marketing? Well, I guess it's like the old saying that when the tide goes out, you can see who's not wearing a bathing suit. Uh, And there are companies that have just been riding a wave or been complacent or gotten a little bit comfortable and arrogant. And this has been a tremendous wake up call. 
It's been a tremendous wake up call, I think, for two kinds of companies, the kinds that had, you know, catastrophic slowdowns and the other kind that had incredible hyper growth. Some companies realized that, you know what, we weren't ready for this incredible hyper growth. And some companies were and some companies weren't. Uh, As professional consultants, as professional trusted advisors, David, I think you and I would agree most forward thinking CEOs dig their well before they're thirsty. They prepare their leadership team. They prepare their sales team. They prepare their research and development team to be agile and responsive and ready, whether things go up, down, or sideways. So there are strategic plans in place. There are contingency plans in place. There are culture plans in place. Because the pandemic, both for both of these kinds of companies, I'm sure you've studied this and, and you can have some great examples. Companies going through hyper growth One of the first victims of hyper growth is the fantastic culture they used to have when everything was under control. One of the big victims of a catastrophic slowdown or implosion is, oh, we had a great culture until everything hit the fan and we had to let two thirds of our people go. So the way that we behaved during the boom times does not, is not congruent with the way that we laid people off or had to make cuts or treated our low paid workers, frontline workers, et cetera. Here's the problem with that. People remember, and the media remembers, and these employment websites like Glassdoor.com, they remember how you reacted during this crisis, and that corporate reputation, and I know, David, you teach this and preach this all the time, takes years or decades to build, and you can lose it in a heartbeat. One bad decision, one bad round of layoffs, one bad choice, one bad media interview, and you got a lot of ground to recover. So I think what what has happened is the tide has receded and the really market leading companies that have the trusted leaders in place, good times or bad, happy or sad, rain or shine, feel like it or not, those companies are now held up as the paragons. And the companies that sort of screwed up and were throwing some things under the rug, sweeping some things under the rug, little corporate baggage, not pretty to look at, um, the word is out. And you're going to have a tough time getting talent. You're going to have a tough time uh, leading your industry unless you fix some of those trust issues. Hey, it's Sam from the Trust Edge team. Most training and development initiatives don't last or even solve the root issue hindering your organization. That's where Trust Edge coaching certification comes in. Trust Edge coaches are equipped with a suite of tools to identify, benchmark, and close gaps in trust for good. Because when you solve the real issue, you get measurable results in a culture where people actually want to make an impact. So whether you're a coach with your own clients or a leader training people inside your organization, check out TrustEdgeCoaching.com and see how you can start solving the root issue and get lasting results in your business. And now back to the show. So let's take this, you know, one thing you said in the book, and I, th- I like that, do it marketing, like we need to do things, right? So, so I think um, uh, somebody I talked to recently, uh, you might know him, Dr. Jeffrey McGee, he said, I said, what are you noticing about leaders that did well amidst the, you know, uh, amidst the pandemic and, and those that didn't? Was there a difference that you saw? And I saw some things and we compared those, but everybody here's heard what I think about it. But Dr. Jeffrey said, um, he said, those leadership teams, their executive teams, all had a sales and marketing pedigree. Those that did well in this time, they had a sales and marketing, they had to do it. They had a, you got to have a bias for actually sales and marketing, not a bias for process, not a bias for some of these other things. They had to have a bias. Doesn't mean we don't need all people and all things, but they had to have this pedigree and this this bias, but that kind of gets to the core of your book. Let's do it. But you also almost contrarily uh, say in your book, marketing needs to be easy, effortless, and enjoyable. So we got to do it, but I think a lot of people don't because they feel like, oh my goodness, now I got to write this, and I got to be on this, and I got to get the video out for that. How do we make it easy, effortless, and enjoyable? Sure, and I think this is especially important for, for executive teams and leadership teams where they can do this selectively. Uh, and here's how to make the selection. If you love writing, if you're a natural writer, I would use writing strategies. If you hate writing, and we talk to so many people, Dave, I know you love to write, I love to write, but there are people, oh, I hate to write. I, the less writing I do, the better. You know, I, I hire people to write for me. I, I'm not going to write anything. 
But if you love speaking, then you should use speaking strategies. And I don't mean necessarily public speaking, paid speaking, the kind that you do, the kind that I do. I'm talking about uh, be on video. That's a speaking strategy. Be a guest on podcasts. That is a speaking strategy. Uh, Use live streaming platforms like LinkedIn Live, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. Those are all speaking strategies. If you love technology and you're kind of geeking out, maybe you're a tech CEO and you love all the technology ways of marketing, great. Forget about speaking, forget about writing, use technology strategies. If you don't like technology, but boy, oh boy, do you get energy from going out to the marketplace, hanging out with customers, hanging out with prospects, meeting new people, shaking hands and kissing babies, and you love networking and meeting people, uh, use networking strategies, both online and offline networking strategies. So there's going to be something that you enjoy whether it is speaking or writing or technology or networking or relationship building or uh, any of these different things, never assign yourself marketing or sales responsibilities that you hate because that's going to be drudgery and you're never going to get around to them. It's always going to be number 17 on your priority list. This is a key. Never assign sales and marketing strategies that you hate. Yeah. Good idea. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, especially right, C-suite leaders, presidents, CEOs, owners, founders, they they are they are selectively engaging in this. Why wouldn't you choose things that you enjoy and things that are fun for you? You have a whole marketing department. Let them take care of the day-to-day. We're talking about your personal brand communication. That's your version of your personal brand marketing. Your leadership brand marketing should be things that you enjoy. Let's go back to personal. Let's go back to Dave Newman as an entrepreneur. And there's ups and downs in the entrepreneurial journey. What what, do you, what are you learning now? And what did you learn? I mean, tell us a little bit more of the challenges of the journey and how you overcame to become the kind of the success you are today as an entrepreneur. I think you have to look at business as everything is, it's going to sound weird, but it's okay. People might might remember it. Everything is disposable. Everything can go. If something is not working, products, programs, services, departments, functions, um, uh, programs, whatever it might be, everything is disposable. Uh, We say in our business that we're not married to anything except our client's success. So if we need to trash our entire service line, our entire product line and go, you know what? Before March of 2020, it was awesome. It was great. Now it's completely irrelevant and everything had to go. Literally everything had to go. Between March and June of 2020, we reinvented this entire business. We let a whole bunch of people go. We brought a whole bunch of new people in. We let a whole bunch of product services and programs go from multi six figures a month down to zero per month because they were no longer serving our clients. We had to boot up over the course of that three months, a whole suite of new programs, products, and services that did not exist before March of 2020. And we hit our stride in 20, it sounds weird to say this, but 2020 was our highest earning year, our highest revenue year, our highest profit year. 2021 so far is tracking about 1.5 to 1.7 times of what 2020 is because we are so hell bent, pardon my French, we are so heck bent on client success that whatever it takes to give our clients the outcome that they pay us for, that's the business that we're in. And we teach this, by the way, the, the way the soundbite around this, David, is forget about what you want to sell and focus like a crazy person on what your clients and customers want to buy. And that's going to keep you relevant. That's going to keep you valuable. And that's going to keep the checks flowing in the door. Forget about what you want to sell and focus on what they want to buy like a crazy person, like a maniac. Love it. I was watching a detective show and I, I forget which one it was, but it was, it was a detective uh, sergeant who was berating one of, his, one of his detectives. He says, where was he at 9.30? I'm not sure why he went into the bank. We have video of him going into the bank. What was he doing in the bank? Well, I'm not 100% sure. He, he gets into this detective's face and he says, listen, you need to follow this guy. You need to every single move, every single muscle, I want to know how this guy likes his eggs. And that's the punchline. You, we need to know 
how our ideal prospects and customers, how do they like their eggs? Sunny side up side of bacon. Thank you. That is what that's the level of intimacy that we need to have. If we're going to be a trusted advisor or a trusted leader, we have to know how our prospects and customers like their eggs. We got to know how they like their eggs. Okay, here's a fun one for you. You know, we moved out to this cool farm. Um, grateful for the lake, cute couple of horses. We have it, it just and our and we can't find this. You know, we gotta name this place. What what's what, what what who are we as horse hunters? And we have a mission statement as a family, and we have some of these other things. You know, four kids and whatever. But finally, my daughter that just I'm four kids, two daughters, two two sons. But she just said, I think it's Sunnyside Up Farms. And our farm, because it just brings joy. And we, we started thinking about that, that, you know, egg represents life and all these things. So there you go. We have the stamp. We have the sign, sunny side up. <laughs> it just became that about two weeks ago. That's kind of funny. And remember, everything is better with bacon. No so doubt it's about perfect. it. No doubt. Perfect. Okay, let's get to you personally as we bring this bring this all together. You know, great leaders tend to lead themselves well, and it's not always easy, but that can be everything from health, emotionally, physically, relationally, financially, maritally. What are you doing? Any routines that you're doing to, to, to lead yourself well as far as routines or uh, tips that you would have as a personal leader? Well, it sounds like a cliche, but it's a cliche because it works and it's proven by many millions of people. Uh, every morning I wake up and I have a morning routine and this is part uh, reading and part thinking and part journaling. And uh, I think that a CEO's most important task is sometimes sitting in your office with your feet up on your desk, staring blankly out the window, thinking time, strategic time, marination time, percolation time. And if we don't take time for that, all the busyness and all the tasks just start to pile up in a meaningless pile. So I, I make it a, a habit to do that marination, percolation, personal reading, personal journaling, first thing most mornings. I love it. What's your favorite, what's your favorite thing to read right now? Book, resource? What are you, what are you liking the, the, these days? I Well, so besides your book, of course, which is awesome, um, picked up a really great book. Uh, by a guy named David C. Baker. It's called The Business of Expertise. And it speaks to the business that we're in, but it's also some great kind of business philosophies. And, um, you know, he's he talks about the consulting business specifically and the, 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 the design business. But there's so many nuggets and so many great lessons in that book for any CEO. Love it. What's the biggest hope for the future? Where are you headed? What do you hope for in the next few years? You know, I am seeing I'm seeing a revival in entrepreneurship. I am seeing this entrepreneurship is moving out of that. Well, I couldn't get a corporate job or I, I couldn't go back into my corporate job. So I guess I'll have to settle for this. There are there is now such a groundswell of excitement and energy and uh, optimism in the entrepreneurial community that where is going to be riding that wave, I think, for the next 10 plus years. I love it. Nothing like entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship, nothing like taking the risk, nothing like the uh, excitement, nothing like uh, having your your hand in your destiny and being able to be missional about what you care about. I mean, I can't think of anything more. Somebody said that to me. They said, when are you going to talk about something other than trust? I mean, you know, you talk about this trust. What, what's your next thing? Like, uh I can't think <laughs> can't think of anything I'd be about other than trust. The way we serve our clients might be different, but um, that's fantastic. Hey, where can we find out more? Uh, you know, you've got the Do It series of books, Do It Marketing. I recommend to everybody. But what's what's? Uh, we'll put all this in the show notes. Tr TrustedLeadershow.com. Everybody can find everything about David Newman and his books and other great offerings. If you're interested in more amping up your credibility as a senior leader or an individual, um, you can find out more. But where would you recommend the first place we go? Sure. Well, two, two things, both free on our website. The first thing is we have some free web training. That's at doitmarketing.com slash webinar. And if you want to grab our 37-page manifesto that is part marketing and part sales and part mindset, that's at doitmarketing.com slash manifesto. We'll get that in the show notes. Thank you so much for that. Before I ask my final question, any last words of wisdom 
You know, a mantra that I've lived by for, I would say, the last 10 years or so, and, and this, this obviously is where the whole do it marketing and the whole do it concept comes from. The, it's a three word mantra. And the three word mantra I sometimes go back to in my darkest hours action eliminates fear. Action eliminates fear. When you're stuck, when you're scared, when you're not sure what the right move is, just make a move. You know, spend as little time as possible in hesitation and indecision and action eliminates fear and action is where you get the data to make good decisions. We, we're never going to get data sitting, you know, paralyzed and stuck during lights. So action eliminates fear. Where did that come from? Is that somebody, is that attributed to anybody you know? You know, I, I don't know. It just kind of came to me one day as a three word thing. It very well might be somebody's out there. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Uh, it's just Love something it. that I've adopted as my personal fortune cookie. It's North David Star. Newman. It's David Newman. Maybe and it Abraham is. Lincoln Maybe it is. And Martin Luther King. Yes. <laughs> all right. My Angelo. They all said it. They all anyway, said it. Einstein. It, I, exactly. Well, this has been a treat. I count it just a privilege to call you my friend. I'm looking forward to seeing you this summer at something we're going to be at together. That's a, a privilege to be able to be a part of. But it is the Trusted Leader Show. So who is a leader you trust and why? I'm going to have to nominate my COO, whose name is Charlie Posnack. And he is, he is utterly calm, completely rational, totally balanced, incredibly generous, incredibly kind. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like the, the right brain, Mr. Creative, a hundred miles an hour, big ideas. You know, I'm the creative energy behind this business. Charlie is the financial and operations and stability energy behind this business. If it was me, I would be like a rocket flaming out of control and going in all kinds of crazy zany orbits. So Charlie keeps me grounded. He keeps our company grounded. He is a he is a buffer. He is a uh, a source of constant, steady reassurance. We need everybody. We need other. That's one thing we learned right away. Right? We need a lot of. Uh, we need help. You and I need we help. Need help. <laughs> Hey, David Newman, thank you so much. Find everything you need at trustedleadershow.com. All the show notes, everything about David Newman. This has been the Trusted Leader Show. Until next time, stay trusted.